Hello everyone, welcome back. Now what I usually do every season is I create a list of what I call wardrobe essentials relative for that season and today that is what you are getting from me and the season of course is now winter. Right, so I've got a plethora of things here on my rail and I'm going to start off with what I would say is probably one of the most important items within my wardrobe essentials and it is the puffer coat. Right, so I have two puffer coats in my collection. I have one full length, one really long, and then one short, which I apologize is probably covered in mud because I actually use that one for dog walking. You can get puffer coats which are like a hybrid, so they either have a zip off or a popper off bottom part, so you can either have them long or short. However, I already had the short version from a collaboration that I did with Arquette. When was it, 2019? or was it 2018? Anyway, a year or two ago, I did a collaboration with Arquette on this new collection of puffers that they have. And I wore this one so much that I then felt like I did need and want a longer version. So I then bought myself the full length version. So the thing that I like most about the Arquette puffer coats, along with their very sort of minimalistic design, is the fact that they are made from recycled down. So that's what's in all of this lovely thick padded quiltedness. It's all recycled feathers and down from things like jackets perhaps, and also from bedding like duvets, mattress toppers, all that kind of thing. So it actually doesn't use any new animal products. Now in terms of practicality, I think that a puffer coat essentially speaks for itself. It's just one of those really practical coats, which is good for really cold weather. Right, up next on the list is a pair of warm boots. Now, it really is gonna depend on where you live in the world and how cold your winters get. You know, you could live in LA where it really doesn't get very cold at all, or you could live in Canada where you have lots of snow. Here in London, we have, I would say, relatively mild winters. Our coldest months are January and February. We rarely get snow. In fact, it's very exciting when we do get snow, so I wouldn't particularly look for a boot that is good for snow. However, these are my current favorite cold weather boots. They're from Flattered. They are leather and then they have a furry, it's kind of like a faux sheepskin lining. So they're nice and cozy. And as you can see the design of them, I think they have a bit of style. So they have style and they have substance. They have quite a nice chunky sole, which has got a lot of grip. The only thing that I'm not so big on and I'm actually looking to replace these is the laces because they are like hiker boot laces, so they have that sort of spotted pattern to them, and I think I would prefer just a basic pair of black laces. So at some point, it's not a major high thing on the to-do list, but at some point I'm gonna replace those laces with all black. Um, but they've got a nice bit of patent detail here and also on the heel. I find them really practical. I've worn them in the rain and they've been great. I haven't had soggy feet. So yes, those are my current warm weather boots for keeping my feet nice and toasty. Right, up next on the list is thermals. So for anyone that watched one of my older videos, I think it was titled How to Layer Outfits for Winter. And I can't remember if it was 2019 or 2018 that I did that one, but I'll leave a link down below in the description box for anyone that wants to see. I obviously spoke at length about thermals, these ones in particular. So these are a couple of years old now. They're from Uniqlo. They are from the Heat Tech range. There are a few different ranges of heat tech under the heat tech umbrella. So I believe these leggings are the heat tech ultra warm and I love them, but I believe that this, it's like a fleecy top. I can't actually find the label now and apologies, but it's absolutely covered in hair. This is just heat tech. So I think we've got heat tech ultra warm. There's one somewhere in between and then there's just heat tech. So I have um, a few different items from within the heat tech range. They're great. Do you know what? They're looking a little bit kind of bubbled in places, but because they just go underneath your clothes, I personally feel like I have absolutely no need to replace them. And they're just a really good base layer. They do exactly what they say. They keep the heat in. Right, moving on. And my next item or items or category is just knitwear. I love knitwear. I wear it from about September onwards until we reach probably March, 
maybe even April. And I keep a couple of basic cashmere knits as well. You guys know the ones, they're my MS favourites. I keep those out even in the summer months for wearing over my shoulders or for perhaps slightly chillier summer evening. So I have knitwear within my wardrobe all year round. Now I'm not going to speak about knitwear in too much detail because a few weeks ago I made an entire video dedicated to knitwear and in there I touched on my favourite brands to buy knitwear from, the sort of fabrics that I look for, as you guys know, that I do like a natural fiber. I even touched on allergies. I touched on the responsible wool standard and brands that have that certification and how to look for it and all that kind of thing. So I'll leave a link down below in the description box for anyone that wants to know a little bit more about knitwear because that video pretty much covers the majority. But yeah, in terms of styling, pretty much every one of my outfits involves some kind of knitwear, which is why it absolutely had to be featured in today's wardrobe essentials video. Moving on to my next category or next kind of item, and it is wool trousers. Now, actually having said that, they don't necessarily have to be made of wool um, because these ones here, which are from Massimo Dutti, are predominantly cotton. These are also from Massimo Dutti and they are actually wool. But what I mean is a pair of trousers or bottoms that aren't actually denim because as we all know, denim isn't the most practical. It's not the most heat retaining fabric to wear come the winter months. So the reason that these are on my wardrobe essentials is because, especially if you find a style or a fit which is slightly looser fitting, that's then where you can go back to your thermals and you can layer underneath some leggings like this. And if they are a looser fit, you will have that little pocket of air between your base layer and the trousers where it can trap warm air. And it's actually, that's when layering comes into the mix and that's how you stay warm. Now, along with the fact that you can layer them over the top of thermal leggings, I just find a pair of tailored trousers or fabric trousers really easy to style. I like wearing them with the knitwear, which again, obviously is also on the list. I think that they're just really elegant and, if you go for a pair of tailored trousers, you can do that very high-low mix if you team them with a pair of trainers. Right, next up on the list is two items as one, and it is a tracksuit or coordinating top and bottoms. Doesn't necessarily have to be a matching set because actually I wore this the other day. So this tracksuit is a matching set. It's from Johnston's of Elgin. And I wore the joggers to this the other day and just felt like I didn't really want the hoodie. And also, if you can see here, the hoodie has gray on it and I didn't want to mix gray into that outfit. So I got this jumper and paired it with the joggers. They're not an identical navy, but for me it was close enough. So essentially you could just have a pair of knitted joggers, doesn't have to be cashmere or wool or alpaca or any of those natural fibers if you're allergic or if you're a vegan, just something that's nice and cozy. It could very well be a fleecy tracksuit. This is actually something, especially for 2020, because it's been a bit of a naff year, but it's been something that I have had so much wear out of. And it has a bit of a double, a double whammy, if you will. It's something that I'm getting a lot of wear out of in the house, but it's also something that I would wear underneath a puffer coat or even underneath one of my wool coats. And if you get the joggers a little bit slouchier, you can still layer under that base layer of a thermal legging as well. Right, I've got one last item of clothing. Do I? Yes, I do, before I move on to accessories. And it is something like this, which I don't really know what to call this. It's like a coat liner. So this is from Arquette. As you can see, if I just hold it up, I have a short version, but they also make them in a long version as well. I've spoken about this in some other videos. It is or can be worn as a jacket on its own. So perhaps in slightly warmer temperatures, like autumn, for example, or spring. But then as it comes winter, this can also be used as an additional layer to wear underneath your coat. So I wouldn't necessarily wear this under a puffer coat because it's the same sort of concept, but I would use this as an additional layer underneath something like one of my wool coats or even underneath a trench coat or something like that. It just adds another layer under there to keep you nice and toasty and warm. And they're also quite thin. So if you don't like the traditional kind of thick, chunky, padded puffer coat, 
this could be a better option but I do get a lot of wear out of this as um, I said earlier I have a lot of coats I only have these two puffer coats but the rest of them are all wool coats and sometimes when it does get really cold I need a little extra layer underneath right now I'm going to move on to accessories so I'm going to start off with gloves this is not how I keep my gloves guys either I don't hang my gloves they're just rolled up in a ball in a little box now I did actually have someone the other day request from me some suggestions for touchscreen gloves I have tried many a pair of touchscreen gloves and not one single pair of them has actually been effective with a phone, a touchscreen phone. So if anyone out there has actually tried and tested and can recommend a pair of touchscreen gloves that actually work and do what they're supposed to, please feel free, add those down in the comment section below. I myself have given up on touchscreen gloves and I just now go for practicality and warmth and I just keep my phone in my pocket until I get indoors. So I've got a couple of pairs here. I have two pairs of these, one in a different color and then I literally just have this pair. So these are some wool gloves, very, very basic. Again, these are from Arquette. I just think that Arquette do really good winter wear. They have nice summer stuff as well, but I think their strong point is their winter wear, which is why I have so much Arquette in my wardrobe in general. And then I have these, which in terms of aesthetics, I'm not really big on because they're sort of fluffy looking. And I, I don't know, I almost feel like I'm wearing a pair of children's gloves. But these are from the Heat Tech range. And inside, they have got fleece. They're really thick. This is kind of like a microfiber or faux suede. And then they have this kind of furry texture on the top. These are definitely my warmest pair of gloves and I have these in black and I also have them in cream. Again, I had these for a couple of years, not entirely sure if they still do them, but worth a look in unique clothes at the Heat Tech range because they genuinely do keep you warm. Right, staying with accessories and I'm gonna move on to hats. So of course my go-to hat would be something like a beanie. These are both, again, from Arquette. Arquette, I just think, have really good beanies. These ones, I believe, let me just double check, I think these are the alpaca ones. Yes, these are the alpaca merino wool hats. And I'll just demonstrate with this grey one. What I like about these is that you can wear them with this bit rolled up, or if I just completely unroll it, none of it is stitched, so nothing, the like brim or whatever isn't stitched into place. So this is the full length of it. What you could do is roll it once, Let's pop it on and then you've got all this excess fabric here which you can kind of let flap. Let me just untuck my hair. Very good demonstration here. You can kind of shape it and let it kind of flap off the back like a little, I don't know, like a little garden gnome. Or you can roll it again. The only thing is, as you keep rolling, it, it does start to get quite chunky. Can't say that bothers me, but if you're worried about looking like you've got a chunky head, something to bear in mind. So. You can roll it like that so that then it's a bit more fitted. And again, you can adjust the roll so that it sits and you haven't got that little section on top. I don't mind the little section on top, but you can basically do a couple of different styling options with it, which is why I like this one and why I have it in, I think, three or four colours. Does exactly the job of keeping my head warm and my ears, especially when you double roll this section. It's nice and cosy and they come in really nice neutral and wearable colors which i think goes with my existing color palette right now that i've covered hats and gloves of course we also need to give a shout out to scarves now my personal recommendation you could have scarves or a snud i like a snud i have a nice cashmere snud and it's great, especially for when you kind of don't want the faff of having a scarf. However, I feel like a scarf, especially if I'm gonna be more specific and say a blanket scarf. So if I move back, you can see the sheer size of this. This is the Acne Canada scarf. This is the wool version. It does also come in a cashmere. The wool version, I believe, is 130 pounds. And I now have 
four or five of these just because they are my absolute go-to. Again, they come in really cool colours. So I have, this is like a torpy grey. I have a grey, a black, a camel. I'm on the lookout for a navy. So they're just really wearable colours. They're absolutely ginormous, so you can wear them in whatever way you like to wear your scarves, whether you want to double it up or whether you want to actually, and this is why I say a blanket scarf, whether you want to wrap it around you a little bit more and have it more as like a poncho essentially. So I just feel like with a chunkier scarf or a wider scarf, not necessarily chunky, but a wider scarf with this amount of fabric, you've just got a few more options to style it rather than something which is a lot smaller and skinnier. Right, now when it comes to bags, I was just thinking about this this morning because I thought, well, I'm gonna have to feature some kind of bag. So of course I use a bag every day and obviously it's gonna be this one. I was thinking to myself, what kind of bag would I usually go for on like a cold winter's day and it obviously would depend on where I was going what we were doing but for the most part I feel like I would go for a larger bag so that's why I'm featuring my Celine So Sangle it's currently my most used bag out of all of my bags within my wardrobe but the reason I would go for a larger size bag is because I have all of the extra accessories on so hat gloves, scarf, whatever else. And I just feel like when you get to a restaurant or somewhere, or if you get hot when you're out and about, you start to strip off these layers. And I like to have somewhere to put them. And so a big bag for me personally, I would find quite practical. And yeah, well, I just always like an excuse to talk about my Celine So Sangle because she is my fave. So yes, in terms of winter wardrobe essentials, a nice big bag that you can put all of your winter warmers in is my must. And now I'm gonna go back to footwear because of course trainers play a huge part in my daily style. I wear trainers the majority of the time, to be honest with you. So these ones in particular, I would say are a really good shout for winter because these actually have a furry lining inside and this lining goes all the way inside, including along the footbed as well. So these are Converse standard chuck high tops. These in particular are black suede. Granted, not the most practical for rain. However, they've had a very thorough spray with my suede protector, but there are a few different options from Converse if you wanted something with a furry lining. I use Converse as an example just because you guys know that I absolutely love the brand and it's probably one of my favourite brands along with Veja for trainers and it's often my go-to. Now they have the Cozy Club collection and they also have the Mountain Club collection or I think it just might be the Mountain collection. Both of those collections have trainers which have a furry line into them so those are the ones that I would recommend if you wanted to look investing at um, a pair of furry lined trainers essentially. However, as I like to encourage you guys to use what you already own, there is a little tip or probably one of my worst kept secrets for improving the warmth factor of your existing trainers, whether they have a furry lining or not. And that is these furry insoles. I've spoken about these a great deal over the last few years. And as I just said, they are probably my worst kept secret for making your feet nice and warm. So sometimes I get a lot of comments if I'm wearing perhaps like ankle swinger trousers and you can see bare ankle and people are outraged that I've got a bare ankle in winter. Well, that is because I've got a pair of these hiding in my shoes. It could be loafers, trainers, boots, whatever kind of shoe, probably not court shoes, but whatever kind of shoe, these are really easy to just slip inside and they will make them nice and toasty and warm. Now, socks are 110% advisable when wearing these, otherwise you'll get really sweaty feet. And also just one other little note, as you can see, these are very thick and plush, minor sheepskin. There will be non-sheepskin alternatives available as well. I'll see if I can hunt some out and I'll link them down below in the description box along with these, or as close to these as I can find as possible because mine are a few years old now. But one thing to note, these are very, very thick. Now this will compact as you wear them. However, if your shoes fit absolutely perfectly and then you go and pop a pair of these in there, it will make those shoes fit tight or perhaps even too tight. So for me, they're perfect because I'm a half size of 40.5. A lot of the time I have to size up to the nearest whole size, which is a 41. So it leaves me a little bit of 
wiggle room, playroom in there. So that's why the insoles for me are perfect. If you're a full size and your shoes fit perfectly, just something to bear in mind that these may well not be suitable for you, or you might have to find something or perhaps flatten them a little bit first before you pop them into your shoes. And there we have it guys. Those are my winter wardrobe essentials. Thank you very much as always for watching and Merry Christmas.